Hello and welcome to my podcast, The Melancholy Guy Talks. And right now I'm talking about addiction. I'm talking about recovery, living with addiction. In this podcast, I'm sharing my journey through life while being an open polyamorous African American male living in recovery. I am the melancholy guy, Calvin or CPJR, if you know me. And today, I definitely believe that change I must or die I will. Um, sorry. To learn more about the Melancholy Guy, go to Instagram and click the link in the bio. Um, and with a donation of $1, you can have access to my first series in, uh, on ethical monogamy. Um, this fun stuff that started my podcast journey. See my Patreon page for more info. Links in the show notes. Uh, links will also be um, on my Instagram bio. Um, so let's talk. Today is going to be 3 26 2020. And I am 68 days, or it's been 68 days since I felt the need to pick up my drug of choice. And it definitely feels great. Today's episode is going to be uh, the second half of the recap show. The first 60 days, part two, episode 51. Um, it's also going to be the first, the last, the next 30 days or the last 30 days of this first 90 day stage of my recovery. Um, so, um, for the remainder of March, as well as for the month of April, I will have a weekly topic that will be aired in 15 minutes for 15 minute increments one release on Sunday and the second half released on Thursday so be sure to tune in uh, for both um, and again welcome to the new listeners and welcome back to the people that have been following my journey um, and shout out to the people if you've been listening since the, uh, the ethical non monogamy days those were definitely a lot of fun um, talking about, I definitely was reading. Out, I was reading out my blog, as I, cause I blogged, um, I blogged the adventures of what I was going through, or what was happening in my life, as um, as I, uh, as I was, uh, you know, living an ethical monogamy, opening up my marriage, um, doing a little swinging, doing a lot of swinging, and doing uh, polyamory thing, where it's, which is where I am now. I find I call myself a polyamorous. Uh, openly polyamorous individual. Um, uh, I'm, I'm in an echo relationship that's open. We're both we both are partners to each other, and while we right now have no, we're kind of monogamous right now, but we still consider ourselves to be open and polyamorous. Um, so what I want to talk about. I'm going to continue um, the recap show that I was started last week. Um, I was talking about some things. Um, I was talking about what was going on with me in the next 60 days, in the last 60 days. So I want to kind of just keep going with that. And I want to talk about what's what's going to happen in the next 30 days to finish out this, um, this 90 day period. And after that, once I hit once for myself, I feel it. So once I hit that 90 day period, then I'll be seriously in recovery. Then I'll be in danger of relapse. Cause I always consider, I always consider that I always consider that if I don't hit 90 days for me, this is just for me. There's no medical um, proof of anything, but for me, if I don't hit that 90 days, I'm not in recovery. I'm just using. So after I hit that 90 days, then I'm like in recovery. I kind of got like a, a solid foundation. So from that point on, if I use, I'll consider it a relapse. Like and, I, and I've been saying to. Um, I realize now, like I've been saying to my friend, uh, Kimberly, uh, or KBB that, um, from what I know now and how I feel now, a relapse will be, is going to be serious for me. Like it's, I'm going to know it's coming because I communicate so much about where I am. Like I was saying in my, in, in the, in the previous, in the previous episode, how I try to keep myself centered as much. And I try to communicate where I am as much. That if I was just to up and go back to my drug of choice. That decision or that uh, event started long before I actually got there. Um, so that's how I'm trying to live. So to me, that's where that 
for me that's where that fear comes in because that that relapse is just not gonna be just like a regular I went out and decided to get high. It's I'm actually gonna feel some physical, um, emotional pain that I just don't wanna feel at this point. You know what I mean? So, um that's one of the reasons why oh, I was talking about my intentions. That's one of the reasons why it wasn't hard for me to set the intention of stop stopping to drink. Uh, I want to get some more into that intention setting because it's a beautiful thing. Um, I wish I had more time, but just like I said, when I set when I set the intention of putting recovery first, I set the intention of getting getting the job that I wanted. Um, I got the job I wanted. Um, I be, was perfectly happy with being alone alone in my life. I was happy with that decision, and I kind of like kind of was. Um, not looking forward to it, but I was just really comfortable with it. And then I'm, you know, uh, Kimberly came back into my life, and she's been um, such a blessing to have in my life um, again um, after five years. And um, we've been on and off together for five years, but it's been really, you know, taking a different turn now. But that's been like just setting attention. And once I knew that happened, just by just by from experience, it's like wow. You know, I got hired, hired for the job, and I started the job on next Monday. Uh, this this will be airing on Thursday. So I had, I'll start that job on Monday. So it would be great to get back to work and then not only get back to work, but like I said before, to get back to work at a job that I really, really, I really wanted. And even with the coronavirus um, happening and we're really, you know, everyone's pretty worried and scared about it. Just, you know, thankfully, I'm, I'm grateful that my job, I'll be able to do, you know, this, everything from home for now um, because I like it is a remote type um, support position. Um, you know, they've already told me that they're sending me my laptop. Um, so I'm just waiting for it to come. And so Monday morning I can be to work. And of course, if, if you know, we're still stuck at home, I'll still be able to do my training that I need to do right from here. So. You know that's that's something to um, had happened um, when I started out in January, and I had like nothing but like fear, trepidation, and I was at rock bottom. But just by setting attentions and then moving forward, um, and and believing that everything that I set an attention to do, I will do. You know what I mean? I don't have any doubt about it. Um, I don't, I don't allow any doubt about it. I can get anxious about stuff and worried about stuff for a minute or two. Then I just meditate and just check on me where I'm at. And I'm usually like, okay, well, I'm fine right now. You know what I'm saying? Me worrying about whatever is happening in the future doesn't going to help. You know what I mean? And then once, once I set the, you know, the intention of getting that job, I didn't, you know, openly apply for other jobs or feel the need to be on one of other interviews. I went on one or two, um, but I didn't really like, you know, take anything that was thrown at me because I I knew that I wasn't going to be happy. I'm trying to set up a a different life, a life of success and just a life of, of, of getting by. Um, and a life that's not just for my addiction, a life that's for my life. So, it was just very important for me to, you know, set that, uh, you know, set that intention and move towards that and then believe that, you know, once things were happening, you know, they're happening for a reason and just don't be scared. Just keep going in that direction. Um, so with that, I also want to say that once I do start working in, uh, next week, um, the show will air. I think I will quote one more show before this. I'll talk about it again. But I'm gonna go back and finish up what I was what I started with the uh, first 90 days. Uh, I will uh, I will start the show was gonna be on a weekly format instead of being split between two. Uh, the show will move to like one 30 to 45 minute podcast. Um, uh, that's gonna air weekly, okay? Uh, and then on top of that, I'm also setting the attention that this will be my last year at this location. Um, I plan to move uh, with by September, uh, October frame time frame of this year, or it'll definitely be out by January. That's my intention, and um, um, I don't know exactly where I'm moving to, <laughs> but I definitely know I'm moving this year. It's just time for me to go uh, from this spot here. Um, I think I've outgrown it, and 
I'm just, I'm just, you know, just, just living your life day to day without any, any attention or, or, you know, just, just set you up for failure. So, you know, that's a lot that's happening this year. And I'm looking, you know, look, I'm, I'm not afraid. And I'm looking for everything. Okay. So, um, for this time, uh, every day of the year, I, 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 I put on in the, in the, in the show that I want to get questions from anyone that's listening who want to ask an addict because like I said the show said I, I think in the beginning of the show I said living with addiction because I said that I believe that we're all living with addiction we all know an addict or are impacted by the 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 scourge of addiction um, that's that's hitting the whole planet it be it opiates meth uh, crack cocaine um, marijuana or alcohol we all we're all touched. Either we were got relatives, children, parents. So um, I get quite. I want to take questions, but also am on a lot of Facebook groups and things like that. And there are questions there. And I pulled up a question uh, that I wanted to answer in the group today that I'm going to look up right now. <laughs> and I'm going to do this every week. But this week's question for Ask an Addict. Uh, I can't say who it comes from, but it says the question was, is, um, why is loving an addict so hard? Okay. That's just what the person asked. And I'm figuring the person's asking this, this person loved one is probably an addict on this person's child or somebody close in this person's life is an addict. Right? So um i can't answer this question because i've been in love with many people and i've hurt many people um based on my addiction and and the funny thing is and i'm i'm running out of time as usual but back in the day my uh ex-wife uh ex-wife number two i call her x2 now um she asked me if role, the roles were reversed and or she was an addict, or if I was to be with an addict, uh, what would I do? Because I was taking her through hell. And the funny thing, not the funny thing, but at the time, I couldn't answer the question. At the time, I could not tell, I, I just said that no. I just said, I don't know. But after living more years with my own addiction, and I stopped feeling for my own self and started seeing what was going on with me and how it affects other people my question is I would leave that person <laughs> I would leave that person and I know it's different for a child um, or any other type of relatives but a loved one um, because I, because and and I when I answered this question in the in the group that I answered in I says I said that the person has to love learn to love themselves first you can't um, you can't love someone who you can't love someone who doesn't know how to love themselves. And that's basically what our issue is as an addict. We do not know how to love ourselves because we're hurting ourselves. We have pain and we're just in a cycle that we can't get out of. That if we just could get some time to stop and think about it, we could figure it out. But as an addict, you can't. So someone from the outside, for me, I don't think that you can love an addict. I you know I don't know I say you can't love an addict but you can't successfully love an addict and the, and the best thing for you to do you know what I'm saying that so that you'll end up hating the addict is to either walk away or put up so many boundaries that they can no longer hurt you okay so that's my question to that that's my answer to the question of uh, why is loving an addict so hard. Okay, that's gonna be that's gonna be it for today. Um, if you have any questions, just send them to cpiercejr at gmail.com and I'll try to either answer them via email or answer them on the show. I always want to take a time time out for the still suffering addict. Um, if you're using, you don't have to use one day at a time. Just reach out for somebody in in the program or just uh, reach out to someone. Thank you for listening. <laughs>